Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, not much going on today. I was hoping to get trees trimmed over. It's windy out, so I can't get any sound. But I was hoping to get the trees trimmed, start opening that up. But that snow is three to four feet deep, so I have the tractor out a little bit today. Um, behind me, I kind of made it so that the water can flow. It'd be out this way. Uh, and then I got it about halfway down. So, I don't know. It, otherwise, I end up getting water that runs down this and sits here. So I'm kind of hoping to redirect a lot of that. Um, yeah, not much else. Got a birthday party. It was chilly this morning, so I didn't get much done. Um, another thing I'm going to get done, and I'll get video of it. Um, I'm uh, probably going to take the throw off the baler. Because of the small acres I run, I'm only five, six acres of hay, um, and they're built into uh, maybe an acre and a half there, two acres there. So I do a lot of turning, and I don't have big straight rows. So, and I think that was part of my issue was the thrower, and I'm switching between hay, so I'm probably going to take my thrower off. Um, I'll do a video of that. I can't get the loader in there because I was hoping to get in, but the haybine jack is froze down, so that might... Hopefully with the warmer temps, it's supposed to be 41, they're calling for tomorrow or something like that. And next week I'll be gone, but the week after that, hopefully it starts kind of freezing or thawing out. Um, yeah, I'd have to get the tractor out, move the hay vine to get the loader in there to move it. So I'll take some of it apart and just basically get it down to bare bones. So I will keep it. Um, I might be looking for a John Deere one because I do like the John Deere pan thrower better. But other than that, um, yeah, I just, I think it'd get rid of so many headaches because last year it was, it was a pain having to constantly adjust the thrower and I have no manual adjustment from the tractor. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I, I think that's going forward for this year. And until I get some bigger fields, it's just going to be the way it is. So keep watching guys. So as you can see, um, I got it somewhat scraped down. I was trying to get back to those trees and see if I can snap them off but that snow's three to four foot deep right in there so the loader could not handle it it did expose a lot of this and I had issues last year with the water not able to run off so actually it should run off here instead of running down towards the shed I had moisture build up in the shed and everything else so should start flowing off um, I uncovered some bare dirt obviously but you can see I was scraping up mud and everything else it wasn't very you know, I was able to kind of get a run at it, and then you hit that, it gets so high, and then it would just basically kind of, because I was trying to keep the bucket flat, and then you'd kind of ride it up and keep pushing it back, and I thought, screw it, we'll just, I don't want to turn into a mud hole. So it's nice and warm out today. They're calling for 50s next week, and I won't be here, so I've been kind of doing other stuff just in the house and clean up the garage a little bit. So, but we're going to, I'm going to get the brick. Get the brush pile burned, hopefully burn a couple logs, and I'll do an overview on the baler. So, we got nothing, so this is going to have to wait again. I mean, this has been a continuous burn. Last year I tried burning it, and it had too much moisture in it. It was just humid out, and of course it dried out, and it was time for hay, and by the time everything else got together, so. I've never really showed this part, but over there is the creek. Um, that dips down about five feet, so... I'm going to run my high tensile straight across. I'm going to take a poly wire. I put two posts in the bottom of it. And those, I'll run my poly wire straight across. And then um, at one point, I might uh, uh, crimp a piece of wire on. And then use that as a loop. And then run it down to, and then crimp another wire on the other side. I'll just take those loose end ones. And then run my poly wire down inside. And then... This is kind of the back side that you guys haven't ever seen. But this area here is about one acre. And then over there, I haven't showed it. It's kind of windy on that side. But, yeah, it's there's trees falling down. And it's just every year it's a new. Well, there's a bunch of wood. I've had people say, yeah, we're going to take it. And they haven't ever showed up. So this year it's going to get thrown on the pile. I'm cleaning that up. We're going to move that fence about three or four feet that way. And then 
You can see over there, that's normally where you guys watch. I'll have that, and then we'll section off this woods, and then we'll have this back part. But this does get very wet. So I, there is some, uh, oh, it, it loves wet stuff. It's not very high quality grass from what I've heard, but I, a bunch of it grows over here. It's also has thistles. Um, I didn't brush hog it last year, just kind of got put by the wayside. I'll brush hog it this year, but I got to get all these sticks cleaned up because you can see a lot of branches that snapped off and there's a big log that snapped off too. So, but this is kind of a big part or we might, I guess, how has everyone put down in the comments how you guys have grazed something with kind of a, there's a waterway that runs through there, but it really has kind of, because the corn stalks run through this field and they run a chopping corn head, so most of it washed. I think they they decided not to go with the chopping corn head, but there's a bunch that got stuck up in there. I kind of broke that up, and then it got washed down here, and that whole area right there is filled with just corn stalks. Um, yeah, it keeps getting washed down slowly, but they're decomposing, so um, basically the crick has to wash its own way. I had the neighbor say he was going to come and he was going to dig it out because he has a backhoe and all that, and he would basically get this to form again, so then it doesn't, because down at the end there, it doesn't have a way to wash. It kind of spreads out. And just about gets to the shed so and the shed definitely on that I've showed I think I did on that north side has wood that's it's starting to rot at places and it's not the best shed but the posts are still good so but yeah I'll uh, I'll show you up on the baler next all right so for this um because of the headaches that I bail such small acreage since I'm bailing, as I said, two acres here, two acres there, an acre there. And you guys saw it, there's a lot of, a lot of straight rows. I have a lot of this, where you're kind of going, weaving in and out of stuff. Keeping this baler set, or keeping the thrower set right, was a pain this year. So, um, I was talking with uh, Dustin Adams, who check out his channel if you want. Um, but I was talking with him about the issues I was having. And we had, uh, he kind of gave me the idea that I might, I'm probably going to take this thrower off. It's not hard. I just got to undo like this pulley or probably that one. And this will come right off because this is just a drive line that runs. And then we got the hydraulic cylinder and that's not hard to take off. So, um, yeah, I'll be taking this off. I will be keeping it. I'm going to put it on a pallet and probably put it back in the corner there. But because it's not... It's a pain having to concentrate on how far it goes back and forth. Um, I know you can kind of adjust this, but I really don't know how well you can adjust it. So, and it's a very steep angle right now. So I would rather, I like the John Deere pan style a lot better. I've seen a couple balers actually, they're New Hollands, and they have the John Deere pan style on them because... It can be registered to fit. Um, talked to another guy. He said you can find them for about 50 bucks. But I'm not worried about a thrower. I'm just more worried about getting this off. We're going to make probably a three to four foot extension to let it come out and drop it on the ground. So then I can clear this out and actually see if I have any missed time, any issues tying. Because I got looking yesterday. And I noticed I put that in there, but that was not holding tight. I need to figure out why that twine disc was not holding the twine in there. Um, co drop your comments down below. I will not get to that until I get this taken off. Um, I'll probably leave this on. But I definitely will undo that uh, belt up there. So that way if I decide to walk back here, this is not... An issue. I mean, granted, it's protected, but it's something else that I can get wrapped in. And also, you can see that that actually hits when you turn this. So I don't know if it was if I have it raised up too high or what, but that's going to be something else that I'll be glad to get out. I mean, it's not hard to take it off, but maybe I'll end up cutting a little bit more of the sheet metal out or something because you only turn this so far. So, but that's about it. Um, 
Yeah, it, it kind of. I had my grandma's birthday yesterday, and that was her 80th birthday. So, decided to do that instead. And as I said earlier, I did not get to that. You saw the snow moved, and it it's melting quite a bit today. But it's going to turn to a slop fest next week. So, so I'm going to put a little add on the end of this video, but. Um, I was talking about this north wall. It's mainly here. You can see there's holes there, and it's starting to rot away. Not a whole lot I can do about it. It's an old bar pole barn, but because they had a post here, or, I mean a tree that was growing up, they kind of notched around it there, and they didn't do the best design because a lot of water, as you can see, flows in here and runs. I have When I get these out of here, I'm going to grade this away and make it so that it all slopes down, hopefully. But something I want to do this year is get this turned into more of a rotational pasture uh, trailer. So I'd like to take my toolbox that I have there, put that on the front here, and make it so there's dividers. Because I was watching another guy's video on the back of his UTV, he actually has it all set up. And I had asked him about it, I don't know if he responded, but this is going to be a nice thing that I can set up. I can keep all my fencing stuff in. Um, when I do the rotational grazing, I can pull this around. I'd like to make something, either a hole in the floor and it's braced somehow, or make some sort of roller or some sort of unwinder that I can put high tensile wire on and just pull this along and let it unspool itself. It'd be just so much easier, and then I can keep posting here and all that. So that's going to be a big project. Um, a lot of it's rotten out, rotted out along the edge, so I might just put a piece of plywood in the bottom because the cross beams are good but this is just it's maybe quarter inch steel so it was made a long time ago the f fenders are old style too but that was my dad's i've talked to him about it he had no use for it so uh that's it guys just remember like um i saw my subs 30 percent of the people that are watching my videos are not actually subscribers so it's free to do um i just ask yeah you subscribe and keep watching my stuff because i appreciate it see you later